That 1930s guy here from the town of Worth, Illinois, in the southwestern suburbs of Chicago land. You may not have heard of this place. It's pretty small, but I'm going to bring a bit of a micro history of this town as part of my uh, Chicago series I'm doing here. And I'm gonna bring out some good, interesting facts. Uh, as you can see, it's a friendly village, according to the water tower. Uh, and it's the home of the Water Edge Golf Course. But there's way more than that to know about Worth. And I will take you on a little bit of a tour, a historical tour. Worth, Illinois. Is it just another obscure town in southwest Chicago land, or is it something special? I don't know. I'll let you decide. Let's go check out some things about Worth. Helen Morgan, Worth's most famous resident, is unfortunately no longer living. If you don't know who she is, she was a very famous uh, torch singer an actress, but mostly known for her singing, in the 1930s and 1920s. And she's buried right here in Worth, right off of Ridgeland Avenue and 111th Street in the Holy Sepulchre Cemetery. And this is really a, a, an amazing find because it, it's such a, a plain grave, you'd never think that this person was internationally famous, uh, especially famous in the United States. Anyone uh, that was living in the 1930s could tell you who Helen Morgan was. She was that well known. She was arguably one of the top female singers of the, of the decade. Um, she grew up on a farm, actually, uh, on the Indiana-Illinois border, and uh, her, when her mother and father got divorced, her mother took her to live in Chicago, where they lived in poverty, but uh, she uh, eventually uh, got into nightclub singing when she was young, and uh, gained a reputation around Chicago. Uh, someone from New York discovered her, brought her uh, to New York, and she became big on Broadway, uh, went to Hollywood, did some movies, uh, never really uh, took off in the movies. I thought she was a good actress, but I guess, uh, I don't know. She didn't, she didn't do too many movies. Uh, her biggest was Showboat, which was a, a play she performed on Broadway. She did the same role. It, it wasn't too complimentary of a role. Uh, you know, especially uh, today is kind of racist overtones uh, to the role because she played a, a mulatto, you know, half black, half white character who couldn't um, marry her lover because he was white. But anyway, that really doesn't whoo, Swindy, have too much to do with uh, with Helen, as she is here. Um, she was big, and unfortunately, um, when she herself uh, had a divorce in the mid '30s, uh, she really struggled with alcohol. Became a serious alcoholic. Uh, got worse over the years, uh, but. Um, Eventually, by the end of the at the end of the decade, she was able to quit, or pretty much quit, from what I have researched. And uh, she went back to singing, uh, tried to re-establish her career, but she got cirrhosis of the liver, and unfortunately died at age 41 in the year 1941. She was born in August uh, of 1900. But um, yes, this is definitely. Uh, puts worth on the map for sure that they have such a celebrity uh, right in the middle of their town. Here's the water tower we were at before, just on the other side of uh, I-294 right now. And uh, let's go check out some more interesting things about Worth. Here at the intersection of 111th Street and Harlem Avenue, this can arguably be called the center of Worth, the heart of Worth. It's certainly uh, the busiest intersection. And now you're probably wondering, you know, where did the, the name Worth come from? Because the land was worth a lot of money? No. It actually came 
from a historical general from the 19th century, William Jenkins Worth, who uh, actually was born in the Hudson Valley of New York and went to West Point. And then after that, uh, was actually um, went to Central Florida to fight the Seminole Indians to kick them out so that they could have uh, white settlers come in and be safe. And uh, he was uh, awarded there for bravery and leadership, and they uh, promoted him to being a general. And then from there, he uh, went even further. He went to. Uh, the Mexican War, which happened in 1846, fought in, uh, under Zachary Taylor, who was the future president, and then the Battle of Monterey, uh, went even higher up in the ranks of generalship. He was still a general, but a higher up general. And then uh, he was actually put in charge of um, the, the new territory gained from the Mexican War, the Texas and New Mexico area. He was uh, put in charge, which was a really big responsibility. And so, you know, look, things look good for him. But uh, unfortunately, he uh, got cholera in 1849, just a few years after the war, and he died uh, age 55, which back then was a pretty normal age to die, really. It wasn't too young like it is today. But uh, anyway, uh, in his honor, they named the town the city of Fort Worth, Texas is also named after him. It's the same guy uh, that they named this town. Now, why they picked uh, this general to uh, name this area of Illinois after, I don't know what significance it had. Maybe uh, the people, uh, early settlers here, just liked it. I don't know. <laughs> like the guy. But that, that is where the name comes from. And it's, it's also kind of ironic because he was uh, born and raised a Quaker, who are supposed to be pacifists, but he spent his whole life uh, fighting in wars. <laughs> but, uh, there, that's where the name Ward comes from. Okay, we are now going to walk through one of the nice uh, residential areas of Worth and talk a little bit about its uh, beginnings. Uh, the first uh, land purchase that we have recorded from the 1830s uh, was 72 acres of this area was uh, sold for $91 and uh, it grew slowly as a farm community after that. Um, there was some activity because there was a uh, uh, Illinois Michigan Canal was in the area, uh, so there was that brought some people. But uh, when they got a railroad connection in the 1860s, that's when it really started to boom. Uh, that's when they got the first um, you know, school district was set up, uh, and the school was built. And by the turn of the century, uh, there was a there was a good influx of people coming in uh, due to a racetrack. A horse racetrack that was uh, made. Uh, it opened actually in the year 1900, where the Holy Sepulchre Cemetery that we were at earlier, uh, that was actually the racetrack. And it lasted for a good five years. It was very popular. People from Chicago would come out, uh, play some bets, have a good time. Uh, but the state of Illinois didn't like that. They shut it down because of gambling. Uh, but uh, it was a big spurt to business uh, for the town. And uh, after that, as far as I, I researched, uh, it, business uh, was very good uh, during the, the next decade. Uh, World War brought more business to the area. Uh, the whole you know Chicago area uh, did a lot because uh, industry during that time. And then the 20s, they had the big suburban boom, and this uh, area again benefited from that. It it grew. Uh, it was actually a little bit bigger than the surrounding towns for a little while, even though now it's just this tiny little area. Nineteen oh two brought the first 
telephone connection. Electricity came in the early uh, 1920s, 1922. That was the year that they finally got electricity here. Um, and the reason I brought you down this particular street, 113th uh, Street, this is, uh, is because the oldest still standing structure in Worth is right here. This green house over here was where, um, well, I, I can't show you if you're looking at me. This green house over here was is actually uh, the oldest structure still standing. Uh, it was built in 1847 originally. It's still there today. Uh, I would have went closer with this. A uh, couple people uh, in the living room area right by the window and they're probably uh, they saw them looking at me. I, they probably don't know what I'm up to. So rather than disturb them, uh, I'll just leave you with that quick glance of the oldest structure in the town. Here is another historic district of Worth, uh, right near the train station over here. We'll check that out in a little bit. And this is Crandall's uh, Avenue. Uh, the Crandalls were a very prominent family. They lived here for years uh, since the mid uh, 19th century. And this was their land over here. That's why they got the street named after them. And the street signs here are pretty cool. They, they're unique to the town. Uh, they have yellow, they're all yellow, and they have a, a flower. I wish I had an explanation for what the flower means. Uh, I, I don't, but uh, it looks, looks good. Um, after all, it says America's friendliest town. And here we have the town hall, which was built in 1950, uh, right at the peak of Chicago's uh, population. If you recall from another one of my videos, if you watched it, but uh, yeah, this was a very old section of the town. This was kind of like uh, the main uh, four corners. This is 111th Street, by the way. Uh, and this is Depot Avenue, and let's go check out that cool little train station. Here is Worth's cute little train uh, station here. Uh, it's pretty old, but it was refurbished in 1996, so it's not quite the original. But as you can see here, you can ride the Metro Rail to Chicago. Uh, pay $10 and you could uh, have the train rides all day long back and forth to Chicago. That's the, the price for a one day pass, which I'll tell you, from living in New York, that's a great deal. Because uh, New York, uh, if you just want to go one way on the Long Island Railroad, about the same distance, it costs you $18. So that's the, the prices here, are, I'm very impressed with their, their rail service. Uh, if you look down that way, uh, the next town over is Chicago Ridge. And that's kind of a, a funny story. Uh, it's not like an actual land formation ridge. Uh, it was called that because in the big Columbian Exposition of 1893, known as one of the greatest uh, world fairs that ever occurred, uh, interesting things happened there. Uh, lots of mystery, murder, uh, they invented the ice cream cone. Uh, but anyway, uh, they needed to remove a lot of dirt from downtown area of Chicago to host the fair. And the Chicago Ridge area is where they put it. There wasn't too many people living there at the time. And so uh, when they finally were making it a real estate development uh, at the turn of the 20th century, the Chicago Ridge sounded like a cool name because it sounded like it was, you know, these dirt piles were natural formations. But um, yeah, both Chicago Ridge and Worth were uh, incorporated in 1914. Uh, the same year. They both kind of grew together, but Worth was actually more of a hub at that time, even though it's smaller today. Uh, the schools, uh, up until 1924, the neighboring villages of 
Chicago Ridge, and uh, to the south is uh, uh, Palos Palos Heights, I believe. And they uh, they both went to school. Those the kids in both those towns went to school in Worth District, uh, where it was centered. But uh, they broke that up as the uh, area grew. As uh, the 1920s was a huge area. I mean, one of the biggest uh, expansions of Chicago land area. And here, in the heart of Worth, we have a pathetic looking little snowman, but <laughs> that's not uh, what I'm here for. Um, I'm here to tell stories about Worth. Oh, here comes the train, the Southwestern Line. It's headed away from Chicago. It's afternoon, so I guess it's bringing people home. One of the many uh, sights. Uh, you see daily here in work. Anyway, so what about the 1930s? I'm the, that 1930s guy. I haven't said anything about the 30s yet. Well, not too much activity happened, but uh, they did get a uh, federal loan, WPA loan, to expand the school district here to make schools, uh, new schools, bigger schools, which they needed uh, desperately because of the growth in the 1920s. Uh, that all the Chicago suburbs experienced and so they they did have a little bit of New Deal money coming into to Worth in, in the 30s in 1934 specifically but uh, another big federal project that affected Worth uh, is right over here Uh, I'm not sure exactly what it is over here, but it's some kind of recreational, looks like a, a batting cages, uh, maybe mini golf setup, I don't know. But behind that is an unmistakable mark of worth. Uh, it's I-294. It cuts right through diagonally uh, worth. And this was started in the early 1960s. Uh, they had to buy out some properties to do it, but um, yeah, it's it uh, definitely is part of the town for sure. It goes right through the middle of it, and we also have uh, here uh, besides it on uh, Lloyd Lloyd Street, I think it is. They have these nice uh, I wouldn't call it that nice, but they're brown apartment structure probably uh, the this is probably the most densely populated uh, section of worth uh, I'm not sure when these were built but surely after the the interstate I'm sure but um, yeah this is just a typical scene in worth and you know those that rail crossing there here's another uh, interesting fact I just learned uh, it seems to be malfunctioning. Uh, I know a train just passed, but before that, they went down twice and nothing happened. And now it just did it again. Uh, it went down, they go down for like five seconds and then go back up again. So that, uh, maybe that's something in the future worth wants to look into. I'm sure that can't be good for traffic. But, uh, let's, let's move on and discover more. And I'll conclude this video with a good view of the historic uh, center of the town here, Depot Avenue and 111th Street. And um, here is the parking lot to the train station. Uh, I did not pay the $1.25 they asked you to pay to park here, so hopefully uh, my car doesn't get towed or get a ticket. But anyway, Worth has a lot of interesting stories. If you look into a lot of these small towns, there's, there's always uh, so many hidden gems that uh, you don't know about till you really uh, start looking into it. And uh, this is no exception, especially the fact that uh, Helen Morgan was buried here. That, that's what really caught my attention. But 
I hope you enjoyed uh, learning about this town. I'll do more of these uh, small uh, er area histories in the future. But uh, if you did enjoy, uh, please like and subscribe. And I always, as always, thank you for watching.